Welcome, 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 everybody, to the Hockey Think Tank podcast brought to you by the hockeythinktank.com, a website for all players, parents, and coaches to go to get a little bit of education and a little bit of inspiration regarding the greatest game on the planet. What an episode we have for you guys here today. Jeff and I are flying solo, and we are going to talk all about building a youth organization culture, blueprinting it out, and we are going to tell you about some really cool stuff that we are doing with the Hockey Think Tank now. But before we do get over to that, let's bring on the talent of the podcast, Jeffrey J. Hulavecchio. Vex, what is shaking bacon? What's up, bro? Um, I was just about to tell you how I'm having a great Sunday morning since we're recording this on Sunday, the day before it goes out. Because every Sunday I have uh, my boxing coach, a buddy who owns a boxing gym, come over and work with myself and usually a couple of my retired pro guys or college guys or whatever. And we just hang out on Sunday for an hour or two, you know, hit the mitts, hit the bag, have some fun, kind of get that locker room aspect that we're all missing a little bit in our life. We've talked about on the podcast how whenever you stop playing, especially guys who played at the higher levels, it's really important to find a new quote unquote locker room, whatever that may be for you. And I found that this Sunday morning thing uh, has been one of them. And as I'm talking right now, Matt Claxon, former teammate of both of us, Matt the Meat Claxon, who probably had like 200 pro fights or probably had more than that. I don't one even know. One of the toughest guys ever. One of the toughest SOBs ever just texted me and chirped me for my Instagram video of me hitting the mitts. And he said, <laughs> keep your keep." What did he say? He said something like, keep your hands up or else you're going to get dusted and get another concussion. <laughs> 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 so he's chirping me. I actually got to have uh, breakfast with Maddie in Chicago. No uh, way. Yeah, we got to have breakfast uh, the day after Thanksgiving, Friday. Uh, both of our uh, wives' families or, or my family's up from up there. His wife's family's from up there. So we got to see each other. So Maddie, if you're listening, which he said he listens to the podcast with his Great son. Man. I hope, hope you hear this, bro. Love you. Um, I'd murder you. Um, op- <laughs> no, he would murder you <laughs> on opposite day 100 percent of the time. <laughs> Could, d- would you say he's the toughest or one of the toughest players you ever played with he's one of the toughest without a doubt not even yeah, close one of the toughest here. like you got guys who are like steve mcintyre who are 6'7 265 when i played with him or 6'5 265 whatever the hell he was yeah um obviously that guy's just like a, a natural born killer but like as far as like toughness would fight anybody and do well against heavyweights, middleweights, anyone like clacker. I mean, man, the guy was just an absolute block of concrete. Like <laughs> was a savage. And we played together every game together. And one of the year. nicest guy ever off the ice. Oh, too. Dude, he'll do the anything best. for anybody in the world. I love that guy. Maddie, we love you, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I uh, just got back yesterday from visiting family uh, out in Portland, Oregon. So my wife's sister lives out that way. You know, it's really interesting. Like you talk about like health and wellness and being the best version of yourself. So one of the days that I was out there, it was like 35, 40 degrees Fahrenheit for us American people. Not sure. Celsius for our Canadian friends north of the border. Um, I was like, M, I kind of want to just go take a walk and go take a hike. I'm going to go take a hike by myself. And so I threw a podcast on and like a, I don't know, like a, development it was with actually uh abby wambach you, you know that name she's like one of the best soccer players ever Sounds played familiar. for team usa yeah like she has a uh, a podcast with her wife glennon doyle that my wife listens to and every now and again she'll um my wife will like send me podcasts that they do that would resonate with me because Ab- abby is one of those people like you're talking about who retired <laughs> she was at the top of her game one of the best women's soccer players ever and she's trying to figure life out right now and so when they talk about some of that stuff she will um send it to me and it just resonates so much it resonates so unbelievably much and so i threw on one of their podcasts went for a hike for like an hour and a half like in portland oregon which is absolutely beautiful and dude i just felt so refreshed and i think one of the things like just getting out into nature getting outside getting away from the screens like by yourself and just having the ability to reflect or you know just take some time for for me meet a little me time for everybody it just goes such a long way man like i i came back and you know it's five kids nine and under like thanksgiving it's a little crazy just need a little time it like i was a new person absolute new person i know you have some thoughts on that i mean dude uh, like every study shows that one of the 
most free and effective ways to battle anxiety and depression and everything is vigorous exercise, you know, or, or any exercise, right? Or getting and, out into nature too. Get, and getting outside is another yeah. one. So if you're doing both of those at once, double whammy, <laughs> like, I mean, guys, it's so massively, massively important to like focus on that stuff because it does help clear your mind dude i'm a psycho if i don't work out like at least four to five times a week i don't handle stress as well and that's not me like like just saying it like I, i'm very in tune with my body i'm very in tune with my emotions um you know it's it's something that i study it's something i think about it's something i'm constantly trying to perfect and be better with and all these things and i 100 percent notice a huge correlation in how i feel how i process hard or bad things in my day-to-day -day life um i see a massive difference in in how i'm able to do those things and handle everything that i do if i'm working on my physical fitness being outside getting vitamin d you know doing all these simple things that we've done our whole uh, uh, lives as a human species that, you know, because of technology and things like that, we don't do as much anymore. Yeah. A hundred percent. And, and working out doesn't have to be like Vex going to the gym at right. first form. Like, you yeah. know, it's whatever tough. it is for you. I went for a walk for an hour and it could have been a half an hour. didn't matter for a, for a hike in, in nature. And that for me was, perfect unbelievable right and like i need to be doing some more jeff stuff i know that raising my hand responsibility accountability yep there we go but like you know for for people that maybe don't have the time to get to the gym for an hour and a half or like just do something, something. just do something and then that something will get bigger and then that something will get bigger and you will feel a little bit better it's just stacking those wins every day and yeah i think that goes a long way to all of our physical mental emotional health and yeah just thought i would share that i love it dude. that's awesome you know what's funny is i i went on my first like actual hike like uh it's probably it was probably a year and a half ago now like i lived in the mountains in italy in like the most beautiful part of the world dolomite mountains like never went for a hike like never <laughs> never did it in austria hungary and japan not really either yeah yeah i never but I went for one and I was like, we're just like walking in the woods. And it was like a year ago. And I loved it. I loved <laughs> it too, man. I went with my wife and uh, my buddy and his, his wife. And, and it was just like relaxing. It was like kind of exercising, kind of not breathing nature, all the things. I really I highly suggest what Toho Sandy did here. <laughs> I got a funny story for you. So like M's family is big on walks. Okay. They go on lots of walks. So I've never been on a walk in my life <laughs> until I met her. Right. And then like, she's like, yeah, you want to go for a walk? I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> she's like, yeah, let's go for a walk. I'm like, to where? I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> and then I remember talking to, so I was at Cornell at the time and I remember talking to Benny Sire, one of the best people in the world. First of all, uh, congrats Cornell beating number one in the country BU uh, wow. yesterday at Madison square garden, sold out Madison square garden. It's a game they do every year. Um, and so huge win for them. Great job. Uh, so Benny, I was telling him about, I was like, yeah, like, I'm just like, wanted to go for a walk. And he's like, what's that? <laughs> it's like, he's like, you just walk. I was like, yeah, I guess you just walk. And he was like, what do you mean? You just walk. I was like, you just walk. I don't, you, I don't know. You just walk, <laughs> but I'm, I'm with you. So like, I didn't get into like hikes until, so M and I went on cause in the Midwest, there's not, I mean, there's not really that beautiful of scenery that you're talking about Italy. So we did our honeymoon in Italy and we went to this place, Cinque Terre, which is like so beautiful and it's all about hikes through the towns. And so I'm like, Oh, I get it. I get it now. And then when I would go recruit out in Western Canada, it was something I always tried to do because Western Canada is absolutely beautiful. You get into British Columbia and Alberta and some, some parts of those. And it's just like incredible. Right. And so, um, yeah, it, crazy. Like when I was out in Vancouver, uh, for Ray's Jersey ceremony, my, uh, me and, and his wife, we went on like a two hour walk <laughs> through like right by the ocean in Vancouver. Like, man, it's just, it's so nice. So it's not like jogging where you Soft just J. run for an extended period of time. It's walking. It's kind of similar, but, um, Anchorman for those of you that don't know, but yeah, man, like just getting out into nature, getting outside, being able to just clear your thoughts. Um, and, and, and just for like another thing too, I remember, so this is a crazy story. So when I was done with my master's program at Miami and I didn't have a job yet in hockey, I was trying to figure out what the next spot was going to be. And Cornell 
both of their assistant coaches had moved on. Scotty Garrow went to Princeton and Casey Jones became the head coach at Clarkson. And so I'm like, man, that would be like a really cool job to do. I didn't know, like it would have been my first year. Can I get it right away? I didn't, I didn't really know. And I went on a run and on that run, I was just like, this job was made for you. You're an idiot. If you don't reach out to Shafe and be like, I want this job and I'm the right person for this job. Had I not went on that run, and like, again, cleared your head and got some perspective and, and, and I even think runs without like a podcast or without music are even better because then you just, you're alone in your thoughts and you get to think and things become a little bit more clear because you're exercising and the right things are happening in your brain and in your body that makes you feel good and you're positive and things like that. So I remember going on that run and being like, just do it. Like, why would you not reach out to him and, and put your whole foot forward? And so I got back, I showered from that run, showered and hopped on an email and wrote a long email to Shafe about why I was the right person for the position. And I ended up with the job, not that day or by, or anything, but like I ended up with that job. And, and, and honestly, like if I had not gone on that run to clear my head, I don't know if I would have gotten it. We don't know where you're at even today. Then, yeah. Then obviously the butterfly effect and boom, 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 who knows? <laughs> yeah. Love that. So yeah, wow, that kind of took a tangent there, but I think Love it was a good it, tangent. We need more of that. And and honestly, taking a walk after you eat is like one of the healthiest things you can do. Really? You go for a five or ten minute walk after every meal, I literally guarantee you, you will feel and perform a million times better. Kylie Sweet. does it all the time. Kylie walks like freaking four times a day. She's yeah. an animal. Yeah. Yeah. I like So it, get man. your walks in, guys. <laughs> Where you now just, that we just advertise for walking, um, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> so today, um, I'm really, really excited. I guess this is kind of like an announcement or something like that. But so we've been behind the scenes with the hockey think tank. So I think people know I've said it before. I've hired two people to come on full time with us. So I hired Matt Thomas and Steph, who is our podcast producer, to work with us. And one of the things that we've been really working on is a youth hockey organization blueprint. And so what is a youth hockey organization blueprint? Well, we're going to talk about it, but we were like, we want to provide youth hockey organizations like a comprehensive, almost holistic approach to building a program. Um, having been at the college level recruited, seen a lot of different things in youth hockey, and then being a hockey director myself at a couple different spots, you know, some of the things that I've seen one of the biggest ones is I feel like youth hockey organizations are kind of in name only and every team is their own little thing that does things kind of their own way. And there's very few organizations that have like a mission and a vision and they're like connected, like all the teams, all the players, parents, coaches, leadership are all connected and kind of going in the same direction with the same kind of vision and, and mission. And so the teams that I've seen that have that, really succeed. They have unbelievable retention. They have unbelievable experiences and like feedback from the people that are in their organization. Talk about like, uh, and everybody talks like in youth hockey, everybody knows each other. And so like everybody now who are in the organization are then talking to people and others. Well, hey, you got to come here. This is awesome. Like it's a great experience with this, with this club. Right. And so um, what we did is we've put together a blueprint to take to organizations and work really diligently with them to provide an unbelievable service for the people that they're supporting. So working with club leadership, like the hockey director and the president and the volunteers, working with the coaches, working with the parents, working with the players, all of the above, all of the pillars of a youth hockey organization. And so we've come up with this blueprint and we kind of want to talk about that here today and, and provide some ideas and provide a, a little bit of perspective, number one, on what, we, what we're doing and number two, things that can help you with your organization. So I'm pumped for this, man. Like we put a lot of work into this over the past couple months and I, I think it'd be really fun to riff on with you as, as we kind of move forward here. What do you think? Hell yeah. Let's go, baby. But first, we have some people to thank. Yeah, we do. <laughs> first person we want to thank is Gelsticks, G E L S T X.com. Go to Gelsticks.com and you can get an unbelievable weighted training hockey stick. And pros use it, college teams use it, junior teams use it, national development team uses it, Jeff uses it in his gym. Just an incredible product. So go to Gelsticks.com and use the coupon code Think Tank One Word, and you will get a discount on these weighted training sticks. Now, if you're a golfer or if you're a lacrosse player, 
They have those too, man. They have those too. So um, yeah, go to gelsticks.com today. Use the coupon code Think Tank one word and get an unbelievable product. You know who I was with uh, on Thanksgiving morning? Eric Glazer. Oh, wow. He shoots a 67. He's a 67 in golf. Wow. Good for him. Yeah. They're like, dude, you need to go to the senior pro tour when you turn 55. Like, <laughs> like, cause he has a real job. He's very successful, does well, but shoots a 67. And I was telling him the reason I bring that up is cause I was telling him about the gel sticks, uh, golf club. I was like, dude, like you're like winning. Per he won his club championship. And I was like, dude, you could use this. I was telling about the gel sticks. So those things are awesome guys. I really believe in them. They're, they're badass. whether you're talking lacrosse, hockey or golf. Uh, want to thank uh, train heroic train heroic is the amazing app that I house all of my online training on. They are the reason that I am able to work with thousands of players every year, over 10,000 players online since COVID. If you have a team who wants off ice training in season or off season, please do not be afraid to reach out to me. We'll just go over it. I'll tell you what I can offer, how I can do it, how much more I can offer at such a cheaper price than whatever you're doing currently. So please don't be afraid to reach out to me. Thank you to train heroic. Also want to say thank you to cure nutrition, cure nutrition, CBD company. I'm with guys. I tell you guys all the time. I use CBD twice a day. I have every, almost every single day since my last season playing 2017, 2018 season, I've been using cure nutrition specifically for two years now. Um, I personally love the daily tincture. Um, and then the serenity gummies, those are my two favorite products, but I also love the nightcaps, um, or even the nighttime tincture. So, uh, I'll kind of like order different things every month, but if you go to cure nutrition.com, you can use my discount code GMBM, or if you have questions on CBD, the how, what, when, why, it's a lot of info out there. Let me help you. Okay. I've obviously studied this stuff greatly, um, and take it every day to increase my performance. So if you have any questions, please just reach out to me. There we go. And thank you also to Helios Hockey. Helios Hockey is an incredible product and service. It is a sensor that you put in your shoulder pads and gives you instant feedback, instant data on things like a hustle score, which is <laughs> incredible, especially for younger players, uh, on your stride mechanics. And also uh, what is a game changer is because it is censored off of when you are moving it cuts your shifts up for you. So you can use it through Live Barn or an iPad or a camera, whatever you're using to, to film your shifts. You get instantly cut up shifts after a practice or after a game of when you're moving around the ice. So just an incredible feedback tool, also with some data stuff as well. And so we have reached a partnership with them where we and Helios are going to give you a discount code. So if you go to helioshockey.com and use the coupon code, again, think tank one word, it's going to give all new Helios members 20% off their first initial 12 month membership. You also get that sensor full free. So incredible, incredible tool for that. Also wanted to thank icehockeysystems.com, the best website out there for all of your coaching education needs. Go to icehockeysystems.com. There are thousands of drills. There are whiteboard explanations from incredible hockey people. There is an ability to draw up your drills, send them out in PDFs, your practice plans to your players, even your parents. Uh, prior to practice, you can also get an association platform where you can get this for every single uh, team in your organization. So coaches can now share practice plans. Coaches can now share drills. Uh, it's just an incredible product, guys. And uh, I use it. Uh, and I know so many different people within the hockey world that that use this as well. So go to icehockeysystems.com, look up the associations platform, and get it today. Also, Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our listeners. We appreciate you guys so, so, so much. We love you. It's why we continue to grind out this podcast every single week. And we just appreciate any feedback that you give for us. So if you leave us uh, comments or likes or leave us ratings or reviews on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts today, uh, it just really, really, really helps us out to share the positivity that we're trying to put out into the hockey world. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your support with that. And with that, Vex, you talk or you talk. Are you ready to talk about some youth hockey organization culture? T -t today junior yes i am let's get it <laughs> okay so we have put together what we are calling a youth or youth hockey organization blueprint where we are going to work with different hockey organizations on just how to create a mission a mission and a vision how to create culture and how to provide resources and support 
for literally all of the four pillars within an organization. So that's the club leadership, that's the coaches, that's the players, and that's also uh, the parents. Uh, like I said earlier, the teams that do this and have like a unified vision and a unified kind of comprehensive culture for what they're doing, those are the ones that are really providing a great experience for the people within their organization. And those are the ones that like, honestly, I think do the best job of developing players as well. And so currently we're actually working with three teams and doing this. We're doing this with the Chicago jets in Chicago, the glacier ice dogs here in Chicago, and also the Ohio AAA blue jackets in Columbus, Ohio. Um, and the feedback that we've gotten so far has been incredible. It's been absolutely incredible. And from all of the people, from the hockey directors to the parents, to the kids, to the coaches. Um, and it's, it's been so much fun to get into the nitty gritty with all of these different organizations and, and helping to provide some support and some deliverables that they can use throughout the year. And so what we wanted to do is just talk about some of the things that we're doing and we're really looking forward to it. So um, first thing we'll talk about here, guys, is we're going to talk about club leadership. So basically like the hockey director and the president <clears throat> and how we can help them to level up and be the best versions of them so they can help their club. And the tagline that we're using is we're putting the hockey back in hockey director because any hockey director that's listening to this will know. And for those that aren't hockey directors, we'll give you a little bit of perspective when people sign up to be a hockey director, a lot of times, and this is me included, you think it's a hockey job. <laughs> At the end of the day, 20 to maybe 30% of a hockey director's job is actually directing hockey, you know, helping the coaches put together practice plans, helping to develop the players, helping to put together strategies and, and programs for player development and things like that. 70% to 80% of a hockey director's job, if you ask them, is putting out fires. It's administrative stuff. It's putting out fires with parents. It's trying to appease a board. Like there's so many different things that go into it that if you don't know going into it, you have no idea. And so what we're trying to do is put a little bit of a structure in place where we can have people doing jobs that takes things off the hockey director's plate that typically a hockey director either isn't good at or doesn't want to do. They want to do hockey stuff. And, and again, putting the hockey back in hockey director and then putting structures and policies and procedures and best practices in place for the president and for different committees and for volunteers. So then we can run an optimized organization. Right. And so I don't know if you've talked to hockey directors before, but having been a hockey director, does that resonate with you? Like I just you want know to do that hockey like, and you're not doing a ton of hockey. <laughs> yeah. I just know that they're usually like super overwhelmed. Like the ones that I'm talking to, like they're, they're really overwhelmed with this, that, the other thing. I honestly don't even know like what a hockey director does, you know? Like, so this is a great episode for me to like learn about this stuff because when I was in youth hockey, I was either a player or a coach and I would just show up and coach. So I'm excited to hear about this. Yeah. So one of the things that we're doing is we're helping clubs to put together a little bit of like an organizational chart, right? Where, okay. And then just like roles and responsibilities and job descriptions for each of those, you know, different kinds of things. And so like, typically whenever there's an issue, or whenever there's a problem, it's always going right to the hockey director. It can be equipment and apparel. It could be scheduling. It could be discipline and accountability. If, if a coach or a player or a parent acts up, now it goes right to the hockey director. Um, there, It could be tryouts. There are like so many different buckets that the hockey director has to fill that they just don't have enough time for. So we want to go in and put together an organizational chart and give people roles and responsibilities that they know what their jobs are. Um, where they can now take some of those things off the plate of a hockey director. Like for example, maybe you have a parent or maybe you have somebody in your organization that's really passionate about social media or digital marketing. Now let's empower that person to run that side of the organization. So we put together a social media policy that can help that person do it. Now, maybe we have something within the organization that after a win, the team manager takes a picture of the team in the locker room. They send it to the social media person, the person that's kind of running it. And now they're in charge of putting that up on the Instagram every time a team wins or every time team functions or things like that, as opposed to it just going to <laughs> the hockey director. Maybe somebody is really into, um, you know, like tryouts, 
you know, they've run tryouts before in different things. Now the hockey director will be a part of that, but maybe that person can be in charge of the registration and the scheduling and all of that kind of stuff for the tryouts. So it's just like helping the hockey director to, to delegate some responsibilities to people within the organization that are passionate potentially about those different things. Does that make sense? Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. So creating I mean, committees, like, creating like a flow chart team who is like, okay, if like first line, you know, your guy's job is to score fourth line. Your guy's job is to this, you know, like if everybody knows what their role is, then everybody can work on killing that role before they try and do anything else. I, I exactly. Mean, it, just, it makes sense to me to, to have this organizational chart do And you've worked in tons of organizations when you've worked in an organization where you personally are not the director has the director given out things like these or no? And that's why you created it. Cause you're like, Ooh, everybody's kind of everywhere. So I've only worked in organizations for like a year. Uh, so like we never got to a point where, you know, I was there for multiple years where we can establish and put these things together. Like when I was at Windy city, we tried to do this, but again, I was only there for a year. Right. So we didn't get to kind of execute on the vision of what we were trying to do. And <laughs> most of us were just there for that year too. Um, so like we, the idea was there, but I just didn't have enough time to kind of follow through with it. And so like, that's one of the things like with youth organization, you have typically hundreds of, of parents that are involved that have jobs in industries that can really help you. Like maybe there is somebody again, equipment and apparel. Maybe there is somebody that is really passionate about swag, really passionate. Uh, about GMBM. <laughs> Guys, don't be afraid to call me for team swag because I can make it happen and make it dope. So now rather than the hockey director sitting there and, you know, doing purchase orders and making sure everybody gets fitted and making sure the emails go out to all the parents and all the things that take an entire day for a hockey director to do when they have other responsibilities as well. Now you have a parent that's really into that stuff or maybe even works in the industry and can help to, to shop it around and get really good prices for like, and so you have these different committees and you have these different people that are owning these things. Now it's taking things off the hockey director's plate and it's putting it in the, responsibility of somebody who actually knows what they're doing as it relates to those kinds of things. Right. And so, um, again, putting together this little flow chart, this organizational chart. Um, and I, I think that's a huge value add for club leadership, huge value add massive. I mean, if you're leading any team, like the first thing you want to do is decide roles and responsibilities. Yep. You know, because then instead of just doing one thing as the hockey director, you can have 10 people all doing their own thing in their wheelhouse while you're doing your thing. Now you got yeah. 11 things accomplished at once instead of one with the chicken with your head cut off. I love it. Toe, yeah. Keep going. Yeah. So, you know, you have those different things. And then you obviously on the other side, kind of like almost let's call it the business side. You have your your treasurer. You have your registrar to make sure that you're all set with. USA hockey or hockey Canada and things like that. So just having a chart with specific roles and responsibilities that people can really, really dive into. I think it just goes a long way to running an efficient organization, um, especially when you're putting people in positions that they really enjoy doing. And most hockey directors don't enjoy putting together spreadsheets on tryouts or putting together spreadsheets for equipment and apparel <laughs> and, and things like that. And so, um, it just, it just helps the overall growth and, and togetherness, I think of the organization. So, um, some of the other things that we're doing with some of the club leadership, like a board of directors training, right? So a lot of times with the board of directors, um, you're getting parents that are coming in that aren't necessarily um, educated on how to run a youth hockey organization. And so we can do a training with the board of directors. We have a manager's training where we can go in and we can train your managers, not even on just like the specific things that you need to do to make sure you're scheduling right and the rosters are in and things like that. But a lot of times the manager is really in charge of like the team culture of, of the parents and, and of the team. So helping to create that, that parental culture and what are some of the do's, what are some of the don'ts, what are the things that you can do? Um, we have different surveys 
uh, that we've put together where we can give at the end of the year to the parents, to the players, to the coaches, just to see how everything is working with the organization that comes directly to us. And then we can present to the board and to the hockey director on the satisfaction of, of the people within the organization. Maybe some things you can do, do better. Maybe some things that you guys are doing really, really well that can help. And again, when it's coming to a third party, an and unbiased third party and not going to the hockey director with these surveys, people are a lot more honest and, and people are a lot more willing to kind of share exactly what they're feeling because there's no fear of like repercussion for their kid or whatever it may be. Um, so like doing surveys like that we can present to, to hockey directors um, like those are things. And like another thing too, actually, before we move on, like, you know how I told you a year or so ago when I was working with Windy City, how we did that like organizational celebration weekend? Yeah. yeah. So we basically told all of the teams within our organization not to travel for one weekend and we were going to like celebrate our organization and we had shared practices with like an older group, an older team and a younger team and a shared game with an older team and a younger team. Um, we did a like informational sessions with the parents on kind of like the vision of the organization. We did, we actually did a fundraiser. Like it was a really, really, really fun weekend. I actually just did that. It wasn't over the weekend. It was during the week with the Chicago jets, one of the teams that I'm working with and it was unreal, man. It was unreal. Like we had uh, mites, squirts, and peewees all out together at the same time, playing like fun small area games. The music was going. The parents were up at the bar. They they ordered a bunch of pizzas and like they were having a good time in the stands. Um, and it's just a way. Again, like we want to help create an organization that is not just an organization. The fact that teams are wearing the same jerseys. We want to help to create an organizational culture where people are proud to wear that jersey. People want to tell their friends that and and people outside of the organization hey you got to come play for us and 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 just provide an, an experience where kids are getting better parents are really really happy with the development of their own children and like coaches and, and hockey directors in the ports are a little bit more sane as well right and so um yeah like I was there at the Jets. It was unreal, man. It was so much fun. When we did it with Windy City, it was so much fun. So like, these are the kinds of services and deliverables that we can provide to these organizations to help streamline things. And all those things you're talking about, like they're so important for the experience of both the player and the parent and the coach. And the coach. Huh? You know, the manager, literally the, the whole youth hockey experience zooming out not like what teams did you play for growing up or how good were you or how far did you get just when you look back on your hockey experience in youth hockey like these things make such a massive difference especially yeah. when you play in the same organization year after year this will completely transform you know what your players get out of out of their youth hockey experience i, I mean uh, you know how i feel about this stuff i freaking love it it's so cool to hear yeah we're it's it's been fun we've already started and it's been a lot of fun and we learned stuff too like you know there are things that organizations that are doing that we haven't thought of and we're like oh we got <laughs> we're adding that to the arsenal <laughs> you right, know like right, yeah. incredible stuff and so yeah so first pillar of the club leadership the hockey director the president volunteers and board and things like that we have a ton of different deliverables we just mentioned a few of them um, that we can provide again to to help build that culture uh the next one we'll talk about is the coaches like what can we do to help the coaches out in in terms of making sure that they're developing their knowledge for the game and equal that with their passion because a lot of times coaches most coaches in youth hockey are volunteers uh most coaches in hockey are looking for a way to be a little bit more streamlined with what they do and so what we want to do with the coaches is just like provide them resources to help educate them and to help them with their day-to-day -day of trying to be the best coach that they can be and so some of the things that we're doing is we're doing a big seminar with all the coaches within the organization where we talk about um, different things that can help them with, with their coaching. And it's not like a seminar where I'm standing up there and saying, you need to do this, this, and this. I'm a big believer in collaboration and a big believer in like coaches working together and collaborating and, and, and getting ideas from each other too. So I kind of guide it, but it's a lot of like them speaking with each other, which is building some culture within the coaches as well. And so we talk about like how to build a culture. We talk about how to handle parents when there's some difficult things that are going on with parents. We talk about um, hockey development and practice planning. And we talk about hockey habits and how to instill these different things within the kids. And it's just a really fun kind of thing to, to, to get everybody together in a room and 
collaborate and, and just really like make each other better. And we've done it with all three of the organizations that I'm working with right now. And it's been awesome like so much fun to just hear what these people have to say and hear different ideas that they're doing uh, within the group. I, we were doing it with the Jets and I went in and typically what I do is I like present what we're going to talk about and then they talk about it in small groups and I go around and I kind of hear what they're saying and kind of chime in every now and again. And there was a guy, we were talking about practice planning and how to design like a practice plan and he's a teacher. And I sat down at their table and he was going through all these different things about what he does in the classroom. And it was like, buddy, you got to lead this. You're with, like, like, I'm not, I'm like, you're leading this part of it. And he got up and he was unbelievable. Like just talking about what you always talk about. What's the goal at the end? Okay. Let's re let's retract back, you know, let's regress back and then let's build, build the plan from there. Um, and so like, that's been a lot of fun. That's so, so what did this teacher have to say that you were like, Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> can you kill? Hold on. Hold on. Can you do that again? Can you make that sound again? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> a lot of it was like, okay. And, and this is something that you talk about a lot with your strength coaching. Okay. What's the goal? Like, what are we trying to accomplish at the end of the day? Now let's work back, work back, work back, work back. How do we start? Okay. And then what are the building blocks that we can put in place? Let's create some milestones plan. and exactly. How, how do you goal set as a coach? What are different things that you want to accomplish within that practice or within that week of practice? And it's regressing back and then building it up. That was a so lot cool. of what he talked about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was a lot of what cool. we talked about, but we also have like different resources. Like I have over a hundred drills that I've used with ice hockey systems.com that I can provide to the coaches at all different levels from Mike novice Adam all the way up into, into midget hockey. So hundreds of drills that they could potentially use. Um, we do a, like a player report card, like a, like how's a player doing? We have one of those. So coaches can fill this out at, you know, the middle of the year and coaches can fill this out at the end of the year, providing a little bit of feedback to the kid, providing a little bit of feedback to potentially the parent as well on, on, you know, what they need to develop, what they're doing really well um, and things like that. And, and the other thing is like, we didn't want to just like go in once with the coaches and have this thing. So every Tuesday at noon central time, we hop on a zoom with all the coaches that want to, or are able to hop on and we talk hockey and we have a different topic for, you know, every, every noon, every noon Tuesday that we do this. So every week they have an opportunity to come on and talk hockey with me and all of the other coaches for all the organizations that we're doing with. So you talk about collaborating, like this is just continuing collaboration, continuing education for all the coaches. So we've talked power play, we've talked development, we've talked um, face-offs um, and, and basically like they choose a topic that they want to do. And then I go back and I do some research and put a little bit of a plan together and, and like our team and, and we go from there. It's been really fun. That's really cool. Wow. That's and so does each different organization that signs up have the ability to hop on those calls or do you do yep. you do them organization by organization? No, nope, not organization by organization. How cool is it for yeah. you know uh, a team in Florida to be able to learn about what some coaches are doing in Minnesota yeah. or in Boston or in Toronto <laughs> on their way right. to Detroit? Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, uh Wayne's World, if you didn't get that reference. And so yeah, it's all about like when I started the hockey think tank as a passion project years ago, I want like community was the first thing that came to my mind. Like that's what I wanted to create was a community where people can collaborate with each other and be guiding people on that journey. And so this is just a great way to kind of build a, a community of coaches that are passionate about what they do and want to get better and want to help other people get better too. Absolutely. Love it. I love that you, you get everybody from all the different areas on the call together I think that's really cool. I also think it just facilitates just like just a better hockey world, especially like within the U S specifically, since most of these teams are probably all in the U S you're working with as of nope, now. all over, man. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I just think that it like just strengthens like just relationships in the hockey world. You know, uh, I think it's really cool that you have all the different orgs getting on the same call. That's, that's, that's awesome. It's fun. It's absolutely fun. And so, yeah. So again, we talked about club leadership and some of the things we're doing to help streamline things at, at the club leadership level, talked about the education and, and almost like matching coaches passion with some resources that can help them to be the best coaches that, that they can be. Um, the, the next pillar, let's call it is the parents. 
And so we're providing resources for the parents. So a um, couple things that we're doing. Number one, they get access to the Hockey Think Tank Parent Guidebook. So we have a parent guidebook that has a ton of different topics that can help parents to, um, and honestly, like at the end of the day, what we're really trying to do is support parents so they can really enjoy and support their kids on their journey of reaching their dreams. So it's not necessarily like we're telling you how to be a, you know, a hockey parent and this is the only way to do it. It's like, how can we provide pr like support? How can we provide resources that can help you to get some perspective and that can help you like, honestly, like enjoy so many parents are so anxious, man. And so that there's just so many different so much information coming in and so many different people in their ear and they get emails daily, <laughs> weekly about different things that they should be doing with their kids, whether it's tournaments or, you know, special teams or advisor, whatever, like there's just so much information. So we're just, we're just here as a resource for them to give them a little perspective that can help them to enjoy their journey with their kids on their kids' youth hockey journey, right? And so we have this parent guidebook. Uh, we have something that we give to the coaches, like a preseason parent meeting template. And this is something that we've actually talked about on one of our short shifts. And I had, and I said, email me if you want this preseason parent meeting template. I've probably had 75 to 100, I don't know off the top of my head, but 75 to 100 different youth coaches that have asked me for it. And then I've been like, I'm using this. <laughs> this is like, uh, like, you know, and so we have a preseason parent meeting template for coaches to, to help set this, set the standards and, and set the expectations for their parents and for their players and for themselves, um, throughout the year. And then I actually, whether it's in person or whether it's over zoom, I have, um, different information sessions that, um, I do with the parents on, again, supporting them on their journey, providing them some perspective on communicating with their kid, on communicating with the coaches, on how to build a parent culture, how to handle the different FOMO, um, you know, different hockey parents that I've been around that have been un in con on and been so passionate about the game um, and things like that. So information session on that for like the higher level AAA teams or the older teams, like what's the path to college hockey? Like, what are the next couple of years potentially going to look like? What are all the junior, like, what are all the junior leagues? <laughs> um, do I need an advisor? You know, things like that, just to help them give them perspective on how to help at like the older levels. If their kid is kind of projecting to being a junior hockey player, being a college hockey player, potentially pro hockey player at the end of the day. And so again, it's just providing those resources for the parents, um, providing some deliverables that can help them through their journey. I would I would be freaking signing up for this just for the uh, template for like the preseason meetings and like <laughs> getting all that. Everybody, all the coaches listening, you guys know if you set the tone the right way in the first meeting you have on day one, it makes everything thereafter much easier for you to control for the culture to go in the right direction. For you know, you you wind up doing doing less work on the back end the rest of the year by letting everybody know, okay, parents, you know, whatever your rule is, you're not allowed to, to email, text, or call me within 48 hours after a game. If it's about ice time or anything to do with your child's play other than an injury. All right. Like just by setting that precedent alone, you're going to save yourself a whole lot of headaches up front by doing that. Right. And so like this, this template and going in with the plan to that first meeting and really laying out all the things that you need to be thinking about at the beginning of the year to make the rest of the year go smoothly, efficiently, effectively, as good as it can for the players, for the parents, for you yourself as the coach, um, for the organization. Like by doing some simple things up front in that first meeting that TOF has on a template like this is really going to help you. And believe me, like I've seen it many years playing and, you know, the couple of years that I coached, coached, so I saw it from kind of both sides. Um, and then also from the strength training side, I hear parents talk to me all the time about different organizations and what a sloppy job some of them are doing, or this one's doing great, you know, and, and a lot of the things that they talk to me about literally could have been nipped in the bud in that first meeting. So something like this template for that alone, to me, uh, extremely valuable. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, like what we're trying to provide here and, and just feedback that I get from some parents particularly is like, this isn't like everything that we're doing isn't to check a box. This is to actually provide a, a perspective where it's actually going to help. 
And so particularly with like even this parent seminar and, and getting in front of the parents and talking about communication styles, talking about handling the FOMO and things like that. Um, the feedback that I've gotten from like some of the organizations is that it's just like, we're saying some similar things, mostly similar things that like the organization is saying, but like when the organization does it, it's almost like they're doing this because they have to check a box. All right, mm. here's our, you know, here's mm -hmm. our pyramid. Now it's from an outside perspective, someone that works with a lot of organizations, someone who's coached at like higher levels and things like that. And have seen kids go from 15, 16 years old up into, you know, college hockey, whatever it may be. And like, we're really trying to provide unbiased, honest communication, support, procedures, policies, things like that, that can really help you, that will actually provide value, that will actually make an impact on everybody involved that we're talking about, right? And so, um, yeah, it, it's been like, the feedback's been awesome, man. Like, it's really, really cool. Like, uh, for me, like when a parent comes up to me, and and this has happened multiple times, like when a parent comes up to me after one of these and was like, where were you five years ago? I needed you five years ago. Um, it, it like, it like almost like melts my heart, you know, because you know, you're making an impact Dude, and I, I need to have you come to St. Louis and work with my old club because I see what's going on there. And it hurts my heart, man. It rids it's, it's a lot of, because of the things you're saying, like they don't have these things in place. They don't, and I just see it just from where it used to be to where it is now. And it, it like hurts my heart because they're not proactively doing things like this. They're not talking to people like you to get in front of things. They're always playing. They're always living in a reactive mode, in a yeah. reactionary state. hundred percent. If you're not doing this shit to stop, like you're always reacting to negative react. Oh, negative. Come at me. How do I react? Oh, this is coming at me. React negative. No, you're getting out in front of it proactively making it this is how we will do things this is the route to do blank this is how we'll do this this is the culture this is the organization that we want because we want to provide an unbelievable experience for everyone involved in this process especially since we know how friggin' expensive hockey is so like from an organization standpoint give more to everybody in that org because especially in today's world, especially with our economy right now, ugh, like, you know, every dollar means something. So like, let's make sure that organizations are providing the value that they need to be to demand the prices that they're charging people to. And when you give more, you will be more. <laughs> as soon as you time. said give more, I was like, oh, he just teed me up. He just <laughs> teed me up. <laughs> Set it up on a plate like Fokker in the volleyball game and meet the Fockers. <laughs> <laughs> meet the Fockers. What a movie. That was Meet the Parents, though. Was that the first one? That was the first one, her? yeah. Oh, okay. Dang. Right, <laughs> it's me. okay. It's okay. okay. I forget. You, got me. you know what I was talking about. I did. 100%. Uh, okay. So, um, we talked about club leadership. We talked about coaches. We talked about parents. The last thing we'll talk about is with the players. And so how can we provide some support? How can we provide some perspective? How can we provide some excitement uh, for the players? And so whether it's via Zoom or whether that's me, um, you know, actually being there with the, the kids themselves, uh, there are a bunch of different team building things with the kids that we can do to help create that culture within. Right. And so a, a lot of like what we'll do with the players, honestly, is how to build like life skills, how to build life skills that can make you a better hockey player, how to build better life skills to be a better person and how to build life skills to, to like reach your potential, honestly, at the end of the day and to help the team to reach the potential as well. So if you have followed me on social media, you've seen some of the things that I've done with some of these programs, like with the beach volleyball and doing different things where they have to throw beach volleyball and they have to communicate and talk. And then you can take some of these lessons by having a lot of fun and talk to them about how that can translate into winning hockey games on the ice. And so we did this one with, uh, with a beach ball where the kids have to sit down and then they have to take the volleyballs. They sit in a circle with their, uh, with their feet and they have to pass the volleyball around the circle with their feet. And you split the team up half and half and you have to go all the way around and there's a winner and there's a loser. And then like, typically a lot of times, like somebody will mess up. And then everybody will be like, oh, what are you doing? Like I gave that. And then like, they start bickering at each other or whatever. And then, and then again, how is this going to translate? Okay. What happened to this group? Why did this group lose? Well, when they made a mistake, everybody started bickering at each other. Well, how does that translate to the ice? Well, somebody might 
make a mistake on the ice. And when they come back, should they be getting bickered at or should they be getting positive? Like, Hey, no problem, man. Like you'll get it the next time. And so just like little things like that on the team building, um, uh, going through some of my five R with the, with the older teams, my five R stuff, where we're talking about resiliency, we're talking about how to build relationships, how to put a routine together and repetition. So you're maximizing your day and things like that. And so all these different kind of things. Then we also have like a put what I'm calling like a player action plan, where it's just like a daily little journal of, of things like, okay, here's what I did today. Here's what I'm grateful for, you know, little things that can help you as a player and little things that can help you be more mentally healthy as, as a kid as well, because we all know that's, particularly when it gets a little bit more serious at the older levels, even though, as we talk about all the time, hockey is way too professional at way too young of an age. So this can help the younger kids too, like just giving them some outlets to be able to write down some of their thoughts. And we talk about this all the time. Like journaling is one of the best things that you can do for your own personal development. And so giving them a little bit of a template to use um, where it takes them three to five minutes because they're kids to be able to write some things down, like what they're grateful for. What did I do great today? What do I wish I would have done different today? Just like reflecting on their day and how they can be better as a person. Um, like it just, if man, I just think it goes a long way. So providing these types of resources and providing these types of services to help the kids, like ultimately at the end of the day, reach their potential as a human and as a player, but also helping the team to build that camaraderie, build that culture. What's important to be able to have that at the end of the day. I absolutely love it, bro. I, I literally just had a, uh, had a player that I was talking to who's an elite hockey player at the highest levels. And, um, tell me that he just started journaling because it's helped him mentally like so much and you know he got a prompted journal and things like that like this isn't like fluffy woo woo stuff you know this is stuff that players at the highest level um levels are doing to help them cope and help them be their best self and and all these things so i i love that you're doing that especially with the younger players get them get them to learn it when they're younger and it just becomes yeah. a habit and they'll be able yeah. to live healthier, happier lives in sports and outside of sports for the rest of their life. Hundred percent, man. hundred percent. So look at the end of the day, we want to make the hockey world a better place. We want to provide support for anybody and everybody in the hockey world, because as people who've listened to this podcast potentially for years, know, like we are so passionate about this stuff. We are so passionate about this stuff. So a couple different things. Number one, if this is something that you feel like your organization would benefit from, reach out to me. So whether you email me, Topher at the hockey think tank.com, or if you want to go to the website, go to the hockey think tank.com and there's a little tab for work with me and then youth organization blueprint on there where you can get a little bit more information. Um, but I'm happy to hop on a call with anybody and everybody that, would potentially be interested in something like this. Um, you know, the feedback that we've gotten from the teams that we're already doing this with, and, and we kept it really simple with just three teams at first, just to kind of try some things out, what works, what doesn't, we've changed a bunch of things already and we've added so many different things to the arsenal. Um, so we really feel like we have something that can truly change the hockey world like truly change the hockey world one organization at a time. And so I'm really looking forward to this. So again, if you can visit hockeythinktank.com or just email me, honestly, email me Topher at the hockey think tank.com. We can set up a call with yourself, yourself and your hockey director, maybe potentially even a board member, somebody that signs the checks on things like that. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this, man. And hopefully people got something even out of this. If, if this is something that you don't want to do um, or, or can't do, hopefully you got something out of this episode that can help you and, and you can take this to your organization that can help your organization level up, right? And so love to hear the feedback. Would love to hear from you. Reach out to me. And uh, yeah, this is something that we're really excited about, man. Really, really excited about. I'm happy you're doing this. You know, you're going to provide a lot of value. You already are. And it's only going to grow here as more people hear how, how it's impacted their organizations in such a positive way. So I'm, I'm really excited for this and guys, like if there's anything I can add to this. I said it in the middle of the podcast, I'll say it again, like live proactively live. Don't live in a reactionary state. You will yeah. never 
get to where you want to go, whether that's as an organization, as a team, as an individual, as and as a business, as anything, if you're constantly reacting to everything else that's coming at you, put together a plan, work with people like Toph, like create goals, reverse engineer where you want to end up, and then work toward those freaking every single day. You know, yeah. I, I love I love what you're doing, Toph. It's badass, dude. I, and, hope, I hope the St. Louis teams hire you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Well, and at the end of the day, like as we kind of go off here, um, one of the sayings that we talk about all the time, structure equals freedom. Mm-hmm. Structure equals freedom. So for the hockey directors out there, for the board of directors, people on boards of these organizations, like what we can do is really provide some structure to to help you not only, number one, be more efficient with what you do, on a day-to-day basis, but also enjoy what you do. We want people to enjoy their experience in youth hockey. So many families are leaving this sport for so many different reasons, whether it's cost, um, whether it's ice times, but a lot of it is just, they're not having a good experience. And so they're choosing lacrosse or they're choosing soccer. They're choosing these other sports. And we are so passionate about this game. So what can we do to help this game be better? What can we do to help get more kids falling in love with this game? What can we do to help the people at the end of the day that are running programs that have a huge stake in, in the love of the game for these kids and then keeping people in the game and getting more people into this game. And so it's, again, it's, it's providing a little bit of a structure, providing a little bit of perspective that can help give you freedom so you can enjoy it and do what you love to do at the end of the day. I love it. Respect it. Shoot it. Kaboot it. (laughs) (laughs) Let's rock. Let's rock. Let's rock. (laughs) All right, everybody. We hope you have a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal week. Like I said, reach out to me, Topher at the hockey think tank.com. And I'm looking forward to to working with uh, a lot of people on this moving forward. So peace out. Boom.